today we're talking about lifestyle medicine with Andrew Litchie, uh, who is faculty here at the center. But Andrew, why don't I just have you introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Andrew Litchie. Um, I'm graduate faculty at the center. I've been there since 2013. I'm also a naturopathic doctor and I have a private practice in Edina. So awesome. awesome. So um, yeah, so obviously today we are talking about lifestyle medicine. And there's a course that you teach here at the center called lifestyle medicine. And I'm just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about that. Sure. I teach lifestyle medicine. Uh, it's a course about implementing lifestyle medicine in one's own life. So there's two different versions of this course. There's one that's uh, entirely online and set for an entire semester. And then we do a May term version of it as well, which is more concentrated. So lifestyle medicine is really, it's a evidence-based or scientific approach for implementing lifestyle change and reducing disease risk. Uh, so it talks about things like nutrition, physical activity, smoking, cessation, sleep, uh, stress reduction, things like that. Uh, it's, all, it's all things you can do yourself uh, to reduce your risk for problems. And who can, who can take those, that course? Well, it's open to uh, undergraduates as well as graduate students. Uh, it's a required course in the master's health coaching program. Uh, we have a, a number of nurse practitioners who also take this. And um, yeah, uh, people from all over the university as well. Yeah. So, so on like the note of life, just lifestyle medicine itself then, um, why is it called lifestyle medicine? Well, I think because it's about lifestyle <laughs> really yeah i mean it, it's really aptly named so it's about how things you can do in your day-to-day -day or routine uh, that uh, that uh affects your health basically yeah yeah so what would be some examples sure so the two of the main interventions are activity or exercise a movement like that and uh, nutrition uh, also things like reducing stress <clears throat> sleeping appropriately uh, you know avoidance of alcohol abuse and smoking uh, th those things so so how do you um, I guess how do you like help people to do those things sure <laughs> well because they're things they have to do themselves right this is mm -hmm. one of the only types of medicine that there is no practitioner intervention there's no medica medications to take no surgery mm -hmm. no stuff to do it is all things people have to do themselves so it is uh, it's about motivation and education in many ways um and it can be tricky right because everyone knows they should eat well or smoking is a classic one everyone who smokes these days knows it's terrible and every time they smoke they think about that yet they can't implement uh quitting smoking and diets like that sleeps like that so you have to implement it and coaching is very important here working on the reasons people have these behaviors so they can make change um so it's it's People who practice lifestyle medicine often do it in classes or clinical setting or coaching setting uh, like that. So it is kind of like a form of health coaching then if you're practicing it? And, well, it's all kinds of providers will implement this. Uh, physician level providers, uh, coaching, nurses, uh, there's all all different ways this evidence base can get implemented in the healthcare system. So coaches are vital for helping people make behavior change, and so are very appropriate, uh, you know, lifestyle medicine practitioners. But uh, but all healthcare practitioners may have a role, in, even with a strictly lifestyle medicine based uh, department. Right. So so along um, or toward like. Obviously at the center here, we're like very um, evidence-based and like research-based. So what is like the research behind this? Oh, it's tremendous actually. <laughs> uh, you know, growing, growing all the time. Uh, so the, yeah, uh, every year more and more population studies come out about this. And this is what makes lifestyle medicine interesting. I mean, uh, how much weight do you have to lose to improve your sleep apnea, right? Um, so when people have definitive goals and we can look at the evidence base for that, then they know, oh yeah, it's five, 10 pounds, reduces apneic episodes by, you know, 20, 50%. So uh, there's a lot of evidence about this, which really guides what you want to do. And exercise is another place that's really important to have an evidence base. Uh, 
because how much are you supposed to exercise three hours a day? Uh, where's the sweet spot before you start risking injury uh, and problems and actually uh, have benefits? So we can see, you know, what happens when you're doing 20 minutes of walking three times a week and increase like that. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I guess um, what, and you kind of started to touch on that, but like, what are the like real benefits of like applying this in your life, I guess? Sure. <clears throat> Well, uh, we can talk about reducing reducing risk of illness. Uh, that's one way it's applied. Um, so it, if you have a family history or some other health conditions that puts you at risk for something like diabetes, uh, then you, can, you know you can reduce some risk factors through lifestyle medicine uh, approaches to do that. Uh, so there's things you can do before illness really manifests to, to prevent it from coming up. So that's one benefit. Um, another benefit is feeling good. Uh, this is about wellness and optimizing how you live and feel. So if you can, you can implement these things, you, you have a higher quality of life, uh, better life and live longer and live happier when you live longer. Right. Yeah. So, and so you said you have a private practice, correct? Right so what, um, what, do you do like in the day to day? Like, how do you, how are you helping people with this? If that makes sense. Sure. <clears throat> so, uh, as a naturopathic doctor, I help people with a lot of different things. And we always talk about lifestyle. Um, people, uh, we always talk about stress, uh, appropriate nutrition, uh, activity. And so always implementing that as part of what we're working on. Um, so it, it comes up in, in every time I see a, a patient. We always check in on these things, uh, check in on sleep, check in on how they're eating and how they're feeling and stress. So it, yeah. it's really integral. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so along like, uh, oh, so I was going to say, can you give me like an example of how you would apply this in like a specific situation or like a specific case? Well, sure. And we'll even talk a little bit about uh, some of the things we do in the course. So uh, in the course, we learn about these risk factors uh, and people you learn to identify risk factors in your life. Uh, for example, uh, you may have um, uh, a family history of heart problems. And so you can look at things you can do in your lifestyle to to prevent that possibility from happening. And then then uh, then you can see what, what goes into that, diet, activity, uh, so on. And then you can say, okay, uh, my diet is not as good as it could be. Uh, I know if I change it in these particular ways, and these are possibilities of, to do that, I'm going to reduce my risk. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you have options, uh, and you can decide what works best for you, both your personality, lifestyle, and what you want to do uh, to help reduce that future risk of an issue. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So... Um, I guess, like, in terms of, um, like, you kind of talked about, oh, this is what I was going to ask. Sorry, I was really um, trying to come up, think of what my question was. In terms of what we're going, uh, what's going on right now with, like, COVID-19 and people mm -hmm. being kind of stuck in their houses, do you have any recommendations um, for how people can kind of, like, what people can do now um, when there's more limited options of... Sure, because the gyms are not open, right? Yeah. And activity, activity is, is low. Uh, and it's very important now, I mean, as much as ever, to stay as healthy uh, as you can. Um, and, and so, right, um, what to do? Uh, if we just look at ac activity, uh, there is walking. Uh, going outside and walking every day. We're not stuck in our houses. We can actually go outside and, and do that. And so that's something you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, there are body weight exercise routines that uh, can be really, really effective without going to the gym, you know, mm -hmm. uh, different kinds of Tabata timers, push ups, sit ups. Um, there's lots of apps available. So if you're walking every day, if you're doing a Tabata timer every day, seven to 12 minutes, that, that's a good workout routine, truly. And mm -hmm. the evidence is really clear that it, it's very effective, even though it's not going to the gym for an hour, or whatever you, people used to do. 
Um, then routine is really important now. Uh, keeping sleep hygiene is just tremendously vital. If, if you are at home, it's easier to sleep in and stay up later. And this can get people into trouble, uh, not sleeping as well as they might or having a disrupted sleep schedule, which is gonna increase stress. It's gonna lead to all kinds of problems as well. And when sleep is disrupted, food becomes disrupted. So, uh, you, you know, evidence is really clear when people are sleep deprived, they eat poorly and make poor food choices. And so these are all things you can do, maintain your sleep, keep exercising and, and you know, uh, and that will help everything else go better. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I think those are like my main questions. Um, if anyone in the audience has any questions, feel free to ask those now. But um, Andrew, do you have anything else you want to add that you feel like um, would be important to touch on? Well, sure. Well, you know, lifestyle medicine and lifestyle changes are really intimidating. Uh, you know, like, like we said, it, everyone knows they could be doing something better. And, and, and when you have a, a diet or lack of activity, it's for reasons in your life, right? You have secondary gains by eating, uh, you know, that second donut or whatever. And, and so it, it can be very frustrating to even think about making changes. But when you make lifestyle changes, it's, it shouldn't be a black or white kind of situation. And you can make incremental small changes uh, that, that lead to long-term change. So it doesn't have to be intimidating. When you think about making changes too, uh, you know, there you should not have rigidity about it, right? It's like you have the second donut. That doesn't mean that you're still not working on your diet. And it, it doesn't mean you failed and now you, you're back to stage one. It's just, it, it's, uh, it's a process. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, so be gentle with yourself, right? And do things bit by bit. Yeah, yeah awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And um, just before we go, um, I just wanted to, tell everyone about some things that we have. So we do have a number of resources on our center website for COVID-19, um, kind of like coping things um, and a bunch of other resources as well. So our website again is csh.umn.edu. And also our health coaching um, application deadline has just been extended, which is pretty, this course is part of the health coaching curriculum, all that. Um, so that application deadline has been extended to July 15th. So um, if you were thinking about applying and didn't get a chance, or maybe you're about to graduate and you don't really know what you're gonna do, especially now, um, that could be a really good option. So our, yeah, you could check that out on our website. Again, that's linked on our homepage, again, csh.umn.edu. So yeah, um, just keep, uh, keep tuning into these and thank you so much everyone for joining us today and this will be posted so if you missed the beginning or completely missed it you can watch it um yeah thank you so much oh thank you